the City of Edmonton is working to further transform Edmonton's core. From parking lots to paradise, we're creating a statement park in the heart of downtown. It will be a green haven for Edmonton's growing downtown population and those who work in and visit the core. Edmontonians value the environment and public green spaces, and the need for a new downtown park was identified and defined through various City of Edmonton strategies and plans. The City of Edmonton made this a priority and has been acquiring land for the purpose of creating a large urban park where area residents, students, downtown workers, and visitors could connect with each other and nature. Located in the Warehouse Campus District in downtown Edmonton, the park site is between the alleys of Jasper Avenue and 102nd Avenue and between 106th Street and 108th Street. A portion of 107th Street will be transformed into a pedestrian promenade within the park and no longer accommodate vehicle traffic. 106th Street will become one of the entry points to the park, with a bike lane and vehicle traffic. Share your voice and help the city shape this signature park. When complete, Warehouse Park will be larger than two football fields and include multi-use and programmable areas inviting people to socialize, celebrate, play, or simply recharge in the heart of the city. Planning for this project began over a decade ago, with initial direction provided in the Capital City Downtown Plan in 2010. Additional strategic direction came from other key planning documents, including Breathe, Edmonton's Green Network Strategy, and the Downtown Public Places Plan. Assembly of the land required to create the park site began in 2017. The strategic plans guided the development of the vision, design goals, and required elements that outline the park's design starting points. The vision for this park is for an urban oasis and an inclusive multi-use green space featuring large, open areas that invite citizens to reflect and explore. Public engagement in 2019 helped to confirm the vision and the design goals for the park. The design goals are a timeless park, a green open space, a year-round sustainable space, and a park that has connections to the area which surrounds it and prioritizes the experience for those who walk. There are some very specific elements that the park design must deliver. It must provide open lawn space, opportunities for play, accessible public washrooms, universal design throughout. This means the park is accessible for all ages and abilities. Active frontage and edges, support of Edmonton's winter city design principles, incorporate 106th Street, 107th Street, and adjacent laneways, and provide places for public art. With this strategic direction, the city and an internationally recognized design team began designing the park in late 2021. The project is currently in the concept phase. This is when we decide what will be built and in general what the park will look and feel like. Input from you will help shape the design. During our next project phase, preliminary design, we will share with you one park design based on your feedback and ask for additional input to get us closer to a final version of the park and what will be included in it. Construction is expected to begin in 2024 and be complete in late 2025. When making project decisions, there are three considerations. City policies and programs, technical requirements, and public input. You are the public, and your input is valued. Now let's take a look at the park design and the creation of the draft concept plan. Let's start at the beginning, determining how and where we enter the park and where those connections will take us. The main or primary park entrances, shown in the deep red color, are along 106th Street and at 107th Street. 107th Street provides a connection to the legislature ground to the south and to McEwen University to the north. 107th Street is also home to the Corona LRT station entrance. The station is marked with a blue X. A portion of 107th Street will be transformed into a pedestrian promenade and incorporated into the park with no access for cars. 106th Street provides a direct connection to the downtown network. 106th Street, between Jasper and 102nd Avenue, will be renewed as part of this project. The street will include both bike lanes and vehicle lanes and is informed by the 106th and 107th Street Streetscape project. The number of vehicle lanes will be reduced and design elements of the park will be reflected in the streetscape to seamlessly blend the park and the roadway. Secondary entrances, shown in purple, provide connections through the laneways around the park and can also become important links to the surrounding streets. 
While 107th Street will be closed within the park boundaries, road and alley frontages will be maintained for buildings and businesses. This image shows vehicle circulation. The deep red lines show movements for general vehicle traffic, including access to parking lots and parkades. The blue lines show movement for service vehicles, such as trucks requiring loading and unloading areas, and garbage collection. Two-way traffic will remain on 106th Street along with a bike lane as per the 106th Street Streetscape concept plan that was recently developed. The park will feature an open lawn space located between the 107th Street Promenade and 106th Street near the main entrances to the park. This open lawn space is 70 meters across, which is three quarters the length of a football field. Locating the primary lawn space in this area considered that it receives less shadows from adjacent buildings and therefore receives good sun exposure all year round. The park will be well connected on all sides to the surrounding area through existing streets and laneways. Considering the different ways one could enter the park from all sides, as well as the desire to cross corner to corner, the park is developed around a simple but effective park framework composed of an X-shaped diagonal path network linked to an O encircling the open lawn space to the east of 107th Street. This strong XO framework responds to desired line movement, or how people generally move through spaces. It also helps to blend the park with the surrounding neighborhood. The surrounding park edges include laneways shared with existing buildings that create exciting opportunities for dynamic people places by turning building backs into engaging fronts. With this foundation, the park design started to come together. Two park site plans have been created for consideration. One is formal and the other is organic. While each option is aligned with the vision and goals mentioned previously, differences in design elements such as pathway style, tree organization or landforms can result in a park that feels more formal or more organic. As we take a look at the options, it's important to note that most elements are interchangeable and could be used in either option, with the potential to create a final concept design that is a hybrid of both. We are asking for your input and preference on the options and elements within the park through our online survey. Let's look closer at the formal site plan. The formal option of the park includes a straight and wide pedestrian promenade along 107th Street, straight pathways with a consistent width, double rows of tree plantings that line the main pathways, green surfaces that are almost flat, lots of benches positioned to follow the pathway and wrap around the rounded corners of the central intersection at the 107th Street Promenade. In this formal option, we're sharing some ideas of how some other park elements could be included. For example, a floral garden and an entry plaza off 106th Street. Now let's take a brief tour of the formal site plan and see how this all might look.
let's take a look at the organic site plan. In the organic option of the park, a meandering pedestrian promenade along 107th Street, slightly meandering pathways with variable widths. Trees are more random, separate from the pathway alignment, and in some places are embedded in the path system. Trees loosely define the park boundary, interspersed with flowering crab apple trees. Green mounds range between 1 and 2 meters in some areas, acting as a green beach, providing a more dynamic and engaging experience. Benches along the meandering paths provide a lot of seating. In this organic option, we're sharing some ideas of how some other park elements could be included, such as an ornamental water feature, patios with seating, and a green park entrance with lawns and flower beds off of 106th Street. Let's take a tour of the organic site plan. Many park elements have been mentioned as we explored the formal and organic site plans. Now let's look at them individually. Paved pathways will provide access for all ages and abilities from all corners and edges of the park, as well as connect users to key destinations within it. The park's pathways can be straight and direct with consistent widths, creating a more formal feeling. Or they can be bent and meander with varying widths, creating a more organic feeling. Both options include a variety of trees to provide shade, add beauty, and define spaces within the park. The trees will help expand the city's urban tree canopy. The city's goal is to plant 2 million new trees on public property by 2050. The way trees are planted in the park can change both its look and the feel. In the formal layout, trees will be planted in a structured pattern, following the lines of the pathways. A double row of trees will be planted along the main pathways. A single row of trees would be used to define the outer limit of the park and create a green backdrop from any view inside the park. In a natural layout, trees are planted in a more random pattern, not following pathways, and sometimes embedded into the paths. Trees will loosely define the park boundary. The height of park terrain can change how you experience and engage in the space. Flatter, more even land surfaces provide a more formal, open feeling. However, a slight rise will be given to these surfaces to hide pathways to give the illusion of a larger green plain across the park. In the more natural option, soft slopes or small hills provide visual dimension with a natural feel. The slopes act as a green beach, inviting people to sit or play. 
Both options consider sight lines and clear visibility through the park for safety. 107th Street will be transformed into a pedestrian promenade, with an extra-wide path for people to stroll, exercise, gather, and connect between 102nd Avenue and Jasper Avenue. The promenade could be a formal straight path that, when looking north, frames McEwen University to the north, or it could meander and bend in a less formal, more natural manner, still allowing a view of McEwen University, but in a less direct way. In both options, 107th Street will provide a significant and welcoming entrance into the park and ease of access to the Corona LRT station. The promenade could act as an event space for food trucks, markets, and other activities. A pavilion is being designed for washroom facilities. While the design for the pavilion is still being developed, there are two prominent locations that are being considered. The first location is on the north side of the park, facing south, and located next to the open lawn space. The pavilion's open structure crosses over one of the entrance pathways, creating an interesting gateway. The second possible location for the pavilion is on the west side of the park. In this scenario, it would act as a central focal point and provide a backdrop to the ornamental feature and the plaza. This project includes the renewal of 106th Street between Jasper Avenue and 102nd Avenue, as it will provide an important entry into the park. It is important to note that bike lanes are being incorporated into 106th Street next to the park. Designs for the entry point from 106th Street are being considered and may include a small paved plaza or a green entrance with grass and flower beds. A plaza along the west side of the park next to the 107th Street promenade could be used for community programming and special events. It may include seating, as well as a central focal point, such as a floral garden or an ornamental water feature, shown here as examples. A floral garden adds life, color, and nature to the space, and an ornamental water feature adds a tranquil formality to the space. The park will provide opportunities for children to be active. This could include play structures in a dedicated area, or play structures that are spread out and integrated into the landscape. Complete our online survey and let us know what you think of all these park elements and options. There are several interactive park features being explored to ensure there are opportunities for all ages and abilities to be active, relax, play, and gather. These park features could be incorporated into either design. The elements being considered include Places to work out. Places to play games and interact with friends. Places to join a game or practice taking shots. Places to sit, eat, and visit. Places to sled and slide for toddlers. Places to sit, watch, and ponder. A place dedicated to dogs. Dogs on leashes will be welcome in Warehouse Park, and a small relief could be included in the design as a specific location for dogs to do their business. Complete our online survey and let us know what you think about all these elements. The park will have a significant public art element, and the artist Sanaz Mazinani has been chosen. You can visit the artist's website at sanazmazinani.com to see her previous work and provide comments in our survey on the type of art installation you'd like to see in this park. There will be other opportunities to provide input into the park's art in later phases of the project. Thanks for taking a stroll with us through the early designs for the Warehouse Park. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think. Please complete our online survey until May 22, 2022, and watch for our team popping up at downtown locations in the coming weeks. Your input will help shape the concept design for this signature park in the heart of Edmonton. Thank you for your input, and we look forward to connecting with you in regard to this project.